All right, guys, so I have, there's been an intervention. <laughs> I've been corralled by these people around here. Yay. Eric is up there too. Um, I've been corralled to take me to the dentist because I do need a tooth extracted. Um, not sure if they're actually gonna do it today or it's just gonna be book an appointment and they'll check it. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been strong armed by Uncle Stephen. He's taken me to the dentist. But there's a problem. What's the problem? The problem is you're getting a wisdom tooth pulled out and you can't really afford that. No, because I've only got two left. I, I know, the I wisdom factor. Wisdom. Oh wisdom crap, I might not down. be able to fix these boats when I come back, I might not be wise enough. Blithering idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eric has told me if you get your tooth pulled out and you come back dribbling and you can't speak, just keep sanding. So, <laughs> I don't feel very loved at the moment, but anyway, just give you a little update of where we're going this morning. Hi, I'm Erica, and this is my fiance, Dave. We are living aboard our new to us hurricane damaged catamaran, Barefoot 2.0. We met in Fiji three years ago and have experienced so many beautiful places together. For the past two years, we've made the ocean our home, starting on our Catalina 36 in the States and the Northern Caribbean. We hope to one day circumnavigate the globe, but for now we are fixing our boat one step at a time. Subscribe to our channel to follow our journey. When faced with a challenge, look for a way, not a way out. Okay, so today's a big day. The trailer is actually finally being removed from Little Sister. So uh, they've actually got the water truck in to remove it. They haven't got the tractor in, but that's absolutely fine. As long as we can hook it up. I think John B's run out of gasoline at the minute. Well, maybe it's gonna go, we don't know. John B normally can get it running. It's good, John B. <laughs> so there we go guys the lads are happy they fixed the trailer they got that out so we're all happy now we'll be able to get to some of these other areas that were very difficult to get to with the trailer underneath it's all chocked and blocked so we can get to those areas now finish up cleaning off the rest of the bottom paint that was uh, still there and uh, finish up with the osmosis tree man hey morning guys so as you know, we've got the sugar scoop pretty much sorted out. It's still gonna need a tiny little bit of fairing and a little bit more long boarding um, for the perfection above the waterline. Um, but today I've decided, we actually woke up, we had a bit of rain in the night, so we're back to puddles. Anyway, gonna get back to this side today and I will be using my cordless tools and I have the bench so I don't need to stand in the puddle due to the rain last night. So I was thinking about having a little crack at this section. Um, if you notice here, I'm gonna try and show it to you. There, this is an area that had it had been smoothed over, over with gel coat. You can see this area here. So when this thing obviously had been damaged in the uh, BVIs, um, someone took out this piece of bolster core and replaced it with new. Some of the work they did looks actually half decent, but I can see in these areas here, there is definite delamination. I'm not sure if you can see the color difference. That I'm pretty sure is delamination. Same with here, here, and there was a spot down in this area. So I'm gonna grind these back this morning. Um, I haven't got long this morning, because if you remember, um, I've been told to go to the dentist. We did go to the dentist, we got there, and we were told to come back on Wednesday at 11 o'clock, and that's today. So I've only got a couple of hours, but I wanna have a little go at this first, um, see if we can grind it back, and then if I'm not feeling too bad this afternoon, we'll try and glass it up, otherwise that'll be for tomorrow. Okay guys, so D-Day is here as I told you earlier, I did a bit of grinding and sanding this morning and uh, now I am being strong-armed into the dentist. 
not going to film this, uh, it wouldn't be pretty, I'm scared of needles, so we don't need to show that on camera. Erica's going to be staying him. home. I might and, film him when he gets home though. Ah, if I'm dribbling I'm sure she'll catch that on camera. Anyways, Erica's going to stay here, make some mac and cheese, something nice and soft to eat for this afternoon. Um, yeah, so I'm off to town and leave it there, I'm not taking you with me. Morning guys. So today I want to try and make it a big day, I'm getting fed up of working on this hull and uh, under the water line and stuff so I really want to get uh, get moving on some of this stuff uh, yesterday kind of got destroyed because going to the dentist we st sat there for about two hours waiting and then we're told it's gonna be at least another hour so we gave up made a new appointment for the first of February um, and we'll be going back for that so today I really want to get some stuff done here I did get some grinding done yesterday on this area expose some of the balsa core where it delaminated down to so I'm gonna grind back a little bit more on that this morning then I want to lay the new glass on this section there's also a few of the spot areas where I was doing inspections before. They're good to glass up here, here, and also a section here on the bow. So this area here, I still need to grind some more on it. There was a small repair done here at the bottom, but I found a big factory fail that was I've been chasing up here. It's got water inside it now that's going to have to dry as well. Um, so this one is also, yeah, this was a factory fail that I've been chasing up. It was just a big air bubble, basically. So that's what I want to get done today. And if I get the chance as well, I'm going to get the peeler out because I have one more section that needs revealing, which is up under here. Um, so that section there needs to be peeled back so I can expose. There is three cracked areas um, that I need to chase out the cracks and re-glass. So let's try and make this a massive day today. Let's try and get some stuff done and get some progress um, so that we can get on with some of the more interesting stuff. Um, also, I think I'm pretty much going to give up on the yard, getting the stands for me. I'm going to go and find a local welder. Uh, probably not today, um, but maybe I'll try and find one tomorrow um, that can actually fix up. There's some stands laying around the yard. They're just rusted and old. So I can find a local welder that can cut out some of the rust and put in some good metal. So that's the aim for today. I'm going to film as much as I can and uh, let's see what we can get done. So guys, the other day we had a visit in Lupran from a lot of big generals and the Ministry of Tourism, the new um, new government basically that's taken over, and they came to check out what's going on here in Lupran. So they did, they come and inspected the yard here to make sure things were done properly, not too much dust and stuff. They, um, and they also, what they did, they, uh, they went around the bay and inspected everything. And there was, on the opposite side of the bay, lots and lots of fishing boats um, looking like this. A lot of them derelict, being worked on, which isn't allowed. Uh, this little blue guy's just been towed over. So basically since yesterday, a whole yesterday and this morning, they've been towing boats off of the mangroves on the other side there. Um, it's going to be quite comical to see what they do with them. Are they just moving them from one mangrove to another one because they've been told to get rid of them? Because they just seem to be stacking them up on this side here. So it's going to be a bit of fun. I think we're going to jump in the dinghy and um, have a little look at where they're actually putting these boats. See if it's just a, a Dominican way of tidying up, i.e. move something from one spot to another. Okay guys, so as you know, um, I made a longboard. Manual one, it's kind of hard on the shoulders. Um, have had a little bit of advice from a couple of other people out there. Apparently if you make different size ones, different length ones, they're, different, they're better for different curvatures and areas on the boat. So that's a possibility. Also had a few questions on people asking with the Flexi, it's called Flexi Sander, that's the name of the company. But this is a fairing board. People are asking, can't we just put sandpaper on here? Probably could, but that would mean sticking Velcro on it. Um, and it has a purpose, it has, that has a job, which I need it for. So I don't want to start mucking around with that, because I actually need it more as a fairing board than I do as a longboard at the moment. Because we're going to get more to longboard and after, but I've still got the repairs to finish. So, anyway, my little crazy brain, laying in bed, thinking about this last night, I came up with an idea. Why can't we build a flexi sander which has a bit of assistance, uh, basically make a power tool? So, picture time, me and my terrible drawing, let's set this up. Okay, so my design I came up with in the, in the evening, or in the middle of the night probably, was if you think about just a, your standard sort of square sander, i.e. something like this. So, I was thinking, this one here vibrates. I want to make a board. So if I was to make a board, like so, okay, and I want to attach it to this, but I was thinking of only using the one machine. So what I would have to do is put a block here, a block here, and then somehow attach this, because this board I want to flex, so it's gonna have to go up. So I was thinking with two, so one on either side, 
This would be like a metal bar or a post or something solid that doesn't flex. And then this board here, like the quarter inch MDF I've been using, would then be able to flex inwards. But anyway, so I came downstairs and then Steven's there standing behind me. He has to approve all of my designs, of course. We're going halves on this if it does go world famous. Um, so he came up with, why don't we make it simpler? If we had two machines, okay, I'm sorry about the terrible drawing. So these are our two machines, okay, and then just one board, make it simple. So you hold this one and you hold this one, which would then allow the board to flex in this direction. So we're going to try Stephen's method first, because if it fails, then we can have a good giggle. And oh, if it doesn't, nice. it's also the simpler one to make. I think Stephen's standing behind me. I just got thrown under the bus. Uh, thrown under the bus again, he says. Anyway, this is the simpler one to make. So let's say three, two, one. Push, there we go, guys. We made a flexi board. I'd say this has not been tested. It has not been tried yet. Um, let's just show you the construction. Stephen, would you hold my camera, please, assistant? <laughs> Okay, so the board itself, simply just cut a piece of quarter inch MDF, glued on some Velcro that came from the loop from Walmart, i.e. little sister. Um, more Velcro on here so that we can stick the two machines on. One thing I am noticing, we haven't glued this to the machine. So we just used like where the sandpaper goes under. Yeah. I can feel that's a bit, mm. Anyway, for proof of concept, this is good enough. If the thing actually works, maybe we'll actually have to glue them onto the sander yeah. to get a better, or because, or because you're pushing in, it may be enough. Pushing in, it might be enough as well. So, that is it, basically, guys. Okay. So, there we go, there it is. But the idea, hopefully, is that we can do this, and we have a power sander. I think it's going to be quite heavy. I'm already feeling it in my arms. So, anyway, let's give it a go. Let's put some Velcro, uh, not some Velcro, some, uh, some sandpaper on it and try it, see if it works. Okay guys, so Steven's going to uh, film this while we give it a go. He just compared us to the, to the Wright brothers. Because, you know, with the experiments, you never know until you try something out. So we are now the Wright brothers. That's there you go, Steven. Okay. Point it at me. <laughs> are you ready? Oops. <laughs> It didn't work. Well, it did, but the Velcro came The Velcro, Velcro came failed there. But no, I didn't feel like it was, to be honest. I'm not sure with the concept with two of these. Yeah. Because if you're at these kind of orbit sand, if you've got two of them, because yep. you want them to go together, if there's two of them, How's two that different go? machines, maybe we want them to go together <laughs> like that. Okay. They might be going like that. Okay. <laughs> it, so, it, so. <laughs> <laughs> the Wright brothers went through all these problems as well, you know. Yeah, but they weren't as good at dancers. It, did, it didn't feel like it was actually sanding. It felt like this was staying still and the machines were just wobbling on me. So, um, leave it with us, guys. Stay tuned for next yeah, week's yeah, episode. Yeah. Okay, so done the grinding, revealed the uh, damaged areas. Uh, what I've done is I've put up some drop sheet plastic over the area, and you can see I've put some markings on there. So that's marking out the outer areas of the, well, this one here is marking out the outer areas of the feathering. Everything else is ground back. Um, do need to do a little bit of work in there first. But I'm gonna put this on the table um, and then use the, uh, well, use the marks that I've got on the plastic, basically on the table, so that I can then cut the cloth I want. I'm gonna start with a bigger cloth first and then work down to the smaller one. Not that to me it really makes much difference, but I definitely want to do that in this type of repair. Some types of repair I don't think it makes much difference. Anyway, that's a different story that I've covered in a different video. Um, so I'm going to lay up about eight layers of cloth on this one, um, all going in different directions, so it goes on more like a biaxle. So we get the strength from the cloth in lots of different angles. Uh, before the cloth goes on, I will wet out the area and I will put a little bit of thickened epoxy on there as well just to smooth out any of the little divots where there was a little tiny bits of damage in the bolsa. There's not too many of those. Um, so yeah, let's pull this down, get this on the table and uh, get cutting some cloth and we can lay this up this afternoon so it can dry and we can start sanding it back tomorrow. Alright, 
so that's everything laid up here on the table. I ended up with nine layers of matting for the main, the big fix. And in the smaller one, one, two, three, four, five, six. That, the reason for that being that isn't ground back as far. That's a lot shallower. Um, this one was definitely ground back more. And another thing that I'm going to do, same as I did on the sugar scoop, I have cut also one extra piece of matting, which will then go over the top and tie everything in up to the edges where the gel coat is. Um, so everything will be laid big to small, and then afterwards, then I will go one more big mat over the top. It's exactly the way I did the sugar scoop, and it came out absolutely beautifully. Um, so that's the way I'm going to continue. I like these materials um, in the ways that I've learned to use them. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with that. That's gone on nicely. So we'll let that cure. There was a couple of small dipped areas where I think you saw I put on just a little bit of thickened uh, epoxy in those areas there. Uh, I'm gonna let this cure now. It's gonna be a nice chemical bond on there for all the layers that have gone on and that little thickened bit of epoxy. Um, tomorrow, I'll give it a little bit of a sand clean up around the edges and then uh, see if we can't get that fed.